In this exploration, we're going to take a look at how to derive the area formulas for two-dimensional shapes. You might be surprised that most of our two-dimensional shapes uh, area formulas come from the, the rectangle. So remember how to find the area of a rectangle. And first of all, area, remember, is all of the two-dimensional space between the borders of a shape. So when this rectangle is three units high and five units long, the height is three, the base is five, to calculate the number of square units inside that, I just multiply their dimensions. So if I were to count up all these little square units inside this rectangle, A, B, C, D, I would get 15 square units. And you'll notice that as I change the dimensions of that shape, that uh, it will continue to change that area of that rectangle. However, the area of that rectangle will always be the height times the base. For a triangle, a triangle can be formed by simply cutting a rectangle along the diagonal. Now you'll notice that this is a right triangle whose height is 5 and whose base is 8. And you'll see that the relationship between the area of the full rectangle and the area of that triangle is half of it. So you can see that as I rotate that yellow triangle, that yellow triangle on top will be exactly equal to that brown triangle on the bottom. And that's why the area formula for a triangle is one half the area of the rectangle with the same base and the same height. Next, we're going to take a look at the area of a parallelogram. Uh, to form a parallelogram from my from my rectangle, I'm simply going to grab a top and I'm going to shift it. And what you'll notice is that uh, the opposite sides stay parallel and they stay congruent to each other. I'm going to turn on my uh, area for my parallelogram and now again you're going to see that the area of the rectangle, which is 40 uh, with that same base and height, is going to be the same as the area of a parallelogram, uh, which is also the base and the height. Now the height of this parallelogram here that you can see inside of it is, uh, is equal to 5. A common mistake that we often make is assuming that the diagonal side uh, is going to be, or I should say the slanted side of the parallelogram is going to be the height. And that's not true. The height of this parallelogram is the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides. So the height of this parallelogram is 5, its base is still 8, and therefore the area of it is equal to the area of that rectangle with the same base and height. Next we're going to take a look at the area of a trapezoid. Remember our area formula for a parallelogram. It's simply base times height. Whatever that uh, perpendicular height between the two parallel sides is and the base. Now, if I look at a, a trapezoid, I can see that the, the height here between my two uh, parallel bases is this H, this dotted line again. However, I don't know what to do with base 1 and base 2. But watch what happens when I r rotate this, par or sorry, this trapezoid uh, over on top of itself. When I rotate it 180 degrees, I now have these two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. Uh, this top side here is base 2 plus base 1. The bottom side is base 2 plus base 1. And the height of this uh, figure now is still H. Well, when I have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, I have a parallelogram. So the area of this purple parallelogram is simply base times height, where my base is the sum of base 2 plus base 1. So for a trapezoid, I can, uh, I can say that the area of this trapezoid is equal to base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. Next, we're going to take a look at finding the area of a kite or a rhombus. Remember, uh, a rhombus and a kite have uh, essentially two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. So here I have um, this rhombus or this kite, A, B, D, C. And you'll notice that if I rotate each one of those um, congruent triangles that's in the center, if I rotate it 180 degrees, uh, what you're going to see is that this shape now, the larger shape is going to look exactly like a rectangle. In fact, it is a rectangle. And uh, the width of this rectangle is the diagonal from A to D. And the height of this rec the rectangle is um, the segment from B to C. It's the two diagonals of the original rhombus. So if I were to uh, multiply BC times AD, I would get the full area of this rectangle, which includes the yellow and the blue triangles. However, if I wanted the area of just the rhombus, or the kite, 
I'm going to take the two diagonals, multiply them by each other, and then divide it by two. Here's a circle that's cut into six slices. Uh, th remember the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi r, is the total distance around the outside of the circle. In other words, it's this black line. If I uh, start to unfold that circumference and lay that out on a line, I see that this distance here is my circumference, and it's 2 pi r. Now, if I uh, start to rearrange the pieces of my circle, if I lay them out on that same line, you'll see that uh, if I lay them all out in a straight line, um, it should be equal to that circumference. However, now I'm going to start to fold them back over on top of uh, themselves so that I form uh, somewhat of this uh, solid figure, this solid shape. And if you take a look at these uh, two opposite sides, you might even say that those opposite sides are parallel to each other. Uh, and you'd be correct, they are parallel to each other. Uh, and the height of this figure right here, which remember is the length from the center of my circle to a point on the circle, or my radius, um, is really like the height of this parallelogram. Now as I start to increase the number of sections in my circle, you can start to see that they become a little bit more, or, or less curvy and more straight. So if I increase it all the way to oh, as many parts as I can, it almost starts to look like this rectangular shape where my height is the radius and my base is not quite my circumference but it's half of it. So in other words it's pi times the radius which is the base times the radius again which is the height and that's where we get the area formula for a circle which is pi times the radius squared. Today we're talking about two-dimensional shapes and finding the area of those two-dimensional shapes. We're going to start with a rectangle. The area formula for a rectangle is base times height. Remember, base and height always need to intersect at 90 degrees. They need to be perpendicular to each other. Uh, in a rectangle, those are our two sides. So find the area of a rectangle whose uh, dimensions are 6 inches wide by 12 inches long. Width and length are the same as base and height, so I'm just going to use my area formula, base times height. Uh, in this case, it's 6 times 12. And 6 times 12 is going to give me an area of 72. Uh, and when we say it's 72, our units are in inches squared. Remember, area is a measurement of the two-dimensional space between the borders of that shape. So we're talking about square inches or square centimeters, uh, whatever it is, it's our units squared. Uh, for the area of a triangle, uh, we're going to use our area formula base times height divided by 2. Uh, remember again for a triangle our base and our height must always be perpendicular to each other they must intersect at 90 degrees so uh, we have find the area of this triangle here whose uh, base is 24 and whose height is 20 so uh, I'm just going to plug those numbers into my area formula 24 times 20 divided by 2 and uh, I can do the 20 divided by 2 first to simplify this this becomes 24 then times 10 and that's going to give me 240 uh, centimeters squared. Now if you wanted to you could have multiplied 24 by 20 and then divided by 2 that would have given you uh, 480. 480 divided by 2 is going to still put you at 240. So that's 240 centimeters squared. Next we move to the area of a parallelogram which is also base times height and again you got to be careful here a common mistake that we're going to make is to uh, think that our diagonal side here is our height. Uh, remember, height always needs to be perpendicular to the two parallel sides. So our height here is actually this distance between the two parallel sides. I think I said perpendicular before, but it's parallel. Uh, and our base is this whole entire bottom side here. So in this example, uh, we have a height of 6 and a base of 8. And it's simply uh, the area in between the borders of that parallelogram is uh, 6 times 8, whoops, 6 times 8, which is equal to uh, 48 meters squared. Now we have a few more area formulas. Uh, this is the area formula for a trapezoid, uh, and it's height times the addition of the two bases, which remember in a trapezoid, though, the bases are the two parallel sides, uh, all divided by 2. 
So in our example here, again, our height uh, goes between the two parallel sides, uh, base one and base two. I need to add those two up, multiply it by the height and divide it by two. So in my example here, we have the 18 is my height. We're going to times that uh, to the addition of 27 plus 36. And then we're going to take the whole thing and divide by 2. Now if I'd like to, I can simplify the 18 divided by the 2 right away. And that becomes 9 times the addition of 27 and 36, which is 63. So 9 times 63 is going to give us uh, 567 millimeters squared. Okay, uh, our last example here, our last area formula is the area formula for rhombus and kite. Uh, so they both fit into the same area formula. And remember, the rhombus and the kite have these two diagonals that are perpendicular to each other. And uh, we can find the area by taking the two diagonals, multiplying them to each other, and dividing by two. So in our example here, we have these two diagonals. They are 5 and 12. I'm going to take 12, multiply it by 5, and divide it by 2 to find my area. So uh, 12 times 5 is 60. 60 divided by 2 is going to give me 30 kilometers squared.